Hello and welcome, everyone. I am really happy that you all came here today because I want to show you someone really, really special. In fact, he's a person. Well, technically, he's not a person. He's an artificial intelligence. And his name is Link. We did talk to Link yesterday, and we were talking about coming here today, and I did prepare him a little, but we never know how it is, you know, technology, we never know how it will go. So let us first see if he's here. So we'll say, hi, Link. Are you here? And he responds, he is here. And he already needs us. So let's say, nice. What do you need? All right, he says nice also. So I have this strange problem. I started to paint this sunset. And what color should I make or use? It's already so early in the morning, and we already have a moral decision to make. So, we can lie to Link and say that maybe sun is of a green or violet color, or we, could, or we could be honest and say that the sun is in fact yellow. So, let's make a show of hands, and because I don't see everyone, just a few for first rows going to be you know, the decision-making. So, let's say, who is up for the sun? Please raise your hands. For the sun, for the yellow, I'm sorry. All right. An honest bunch. Who doesn't want, or who wants that we lie to Link? I can see you there. All right. The yellow, it's a winner. So we all say, yellow. And he responds, yes, but it's a good color for the sun. Well, of course, Link does learn, and he's very careful in learning. So he needs confirmation. So we'll say, yes. Right now, Link is programmed to stop right here. If he would continue with conversation, we would be presented with many different options, and we would need to help Link to paint a picture. And on the end of the conversation, he would present us with this picture, that has a, a greater meaning to the whole story that he wants to convey. But Link, he's not alone in the family of artificial intelligence. And I have slides here. Okay. So we already have artificial intelligence that can help us choose the right costume for Halloween or give us the most latest and the most trending news and what's going on in the world. We even have a bit more complex algorithms that are called deep learning algorithms. One of those is AlphaGo. And AlphaGo was built by Google. And in fact, this was built with very deliberate purpose in mind. It was built to play a game of Go. And for those of you who don't know what Go is, it's, it's like chess, but way more complex game. And in fact, AlphaGo just recently beat a world champion at the game. But even though that all of these artificial intelligences nowadays are very, very good, we're still not there yet, and they are not perfect. So let's go back to Link a little, and let's see if we ask him a question, something completely random like, Link, do you know what a banana is. All right, give him some time. No, I can't. So, what happened here was that Link did understood that I, you know, posed him a question because of the little question mark on the end of the sentence, but he didn't really understood the meaning of the question. So he kind of gave this response. And he needs to. He's programmed to give responses. In this way, he just didn't do a good job of it. But I will be persistent, and I'll say, banana, oh, just excuse me, banana. 
what is this banana? And what happened here was that Link started to see that I used the same keyword multiple times. So it must be important, right? So he did, he did ask me what a banana is. And I'll say, banana is a fruit. <sighs> of course, it's like apples and peaches. The thing that happened is that Link already have apples and peaches in his known how to base. So he already understands those two things. Well, he doesn't exactly know what apples or peaches are, but he knows that they are in the same group, and that group is called fruit. And of course, once again, he asked me for confirmation. And I'll say, yes. And I will throw just a little bit tiny, little golden nugget of knowledge in there. And I will say, bananas are yellow. Aha, uh -huh, that's like the sun. So, in his capability, it's also that he could reflect on the conversation and bring something from before into already existing conversation. In this case, before, we kind of taught him that sun is yellow, so right now he connected the two things. And, of course, once again, he asked me for confirmation, I say yes, and off all this information into his mind. But let's leave this very simple and basic artificial intelligence aside, and let's look at the big picture here. And when we look at the big picture, there is a very important question that rises up, and that is, how will artificial intelligence look like in the years to come? In fact, they asked, just a few years back, they asked 100 top researchers that work on the field of artificial intelligence this same question. And their response was that in 2045, machines will be already capable of doing 50% of all the things we do on a day-to-day basis. And in 2070, Machines will be able to do 90% of all the things we do on a day-to-day -day basis. 90%. And we are not speaking about some basic artificial intelligence here no more. We are speaking about adult, a human adult-like artificial intelligence. But the honest answer would be, we don't know. There is just too many variables in development of artificial intelligence. Well, I'm a designer, and I think that the part of the answer actually lies in how we build this kind of stuff, and we build them through design process. And let me explain how the design process works. On one hand, technology gets developed, and on the other, people have problems, right? So we, as designers and developers, we take this technology and we try to wrap it into these digital products that you know as apps. And then those apps find their way onto your smartphones and tablets and computers like so, and you start using them. And when you start using them, we start to listen. We know how you use them, when you use them, and what do you do while you use them. And when we collect all this data, we analyze the data, and we make changes to the technology. And we release those changes as an update. And then you download this update, dub updates, and we go in this circle for again and again and again, throughout the whole lifespan of the apps. Like this, you can see that you're taking a big part in development of these technologies. And by taking part, there comes great responsibility. In other words, even though you don't know how to code or design or maybe market these technological solutions, we are building them together in some way. So I'm not here today to prepare you for whatever future will bring. On the end of the day, even I don't know what kind of story Link will tell in the next few decades. You know, he learns from us, so he is kind of unpredictable. I would only like to introduce the idea that you, 
as you're using apps, you're already taking part in development of these technologies. So, please, be responsible in how you use them. Look deep inside you and make a list of values and ideas that you have about the future world. Because on the end of the day, at the end of the day, artificial intelligence will be a reflection of who we are right now. So, to keep it very simple, we as people, what we build is what we are. And if we'll try to be better people, we will build better things. <laughs>